Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fausto Puglisi, president and founder of Cyber Trading University. Want to do a audio check? Can everybody hear me loud and clear? Just give me a chat back. Tony, good, good, good. Excellent. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for sticking around today on a Saturday. I know we started at 10 a.m. It's been a long day, two more speakers, and it's been unbelievable that every single one of you have stuck around and obviously it must have been a great presentation. Um, a lot of great content need to be covered. Once again, I'm going to start pick up, picking up from here and then our feature guest, uh, John Jerian, uh, and uh, John or Peter is going to be joining us right after my event and he's going to talk about options. So we're definitely looking forward to that one. It's going to be a very, very exciting one meeting. But let me get into talking about myself and getting into trading, teaching you all a lot about uh, trading in the market. And once again, I'm going to talk about how to trade the market, how to buy, how to sell, how everybody goes out there and finds these stocks because that's what it's all about. Now, um, just out of um, – if everybody could just be so kind to let me know, where is everybody logged in from? From home? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Eric, I like that one from Texas, Florida, Connecticut, Sweden. There we go. We have a couple of people from overseas, Canada. Okay, great. Toronto, beautiful. Pennsylvania, Minnesota, New York. Wow, that's unbelievable. Tokyo, I guess. I don't know if anybody could beat that one. What time is it in Tokyo right now? Washington, D.C., great, great. And, uh, you know, one last question. I always like to get to know my uh, everybody attends these events. What kind of trader is everybody looking to be? Are you a stock trader, a forex trader, a swing trader, futures, options? Um, just to kind of get to know a little bit about what kind of trader is everyone looking to be. Forex options, a little bit of both. A profitable trader. All of the above, Ryan. Register today at www.cybertradinguniversity.com or call 877-70-CYBER. Wow. So it, it's great to see a lot of you are very, very diversified because, you know what, as much as you need to be really focused on one specific strategy, it, it's like saying, you know what, I like the motorcycle, I could drive the motorcycle, but I'd rather stick with the car, you know? But but you should know, God forbid, an emergency, and there's another opportunity to profit from a different type of an exchange, if it's Forex, if it's options, if it's, you know, whatever, a swing trade. Um, there, are different, there are different ways of leveraging yourself, and that's why it's great that a lot of you should know all these markets. And not only that, some of us, will adapt and understand markets better than others, and that's why we have all these great speakers like we had today. So what I'm going to talk about, what my expertise, what I like to do, is I preferably like to day trade. Now, has anyone ever here day trade now, as in stock, stock day trading? Also, maybe short-term swing trading? Lionel Dale, a lot of you. Okay, great. Occasionally, Bill, okay. Well, first of all, it, it is a part-time job for some of you, okay. Um, I like to day trade because I like to just get in and out of the same day. I don't like to hold positions overnight. Uh, I like to just get into position, make my days pay, and move on. Uh, and I've tried all different markets, you know. I tried the futures. I tried Forex. So, but I'm going to tell you why it is very important for you to understand how to trade and learn because trading has about an 80 to 90% failure rate. And the reason why people fail is because most people tend to be self-taught. It's like you're, it's like you're, it's like you're setting yourself up to lose money and it's not worth it. But you know what? Everybody that is here today is a hell of a lot smarter than the tens of millions of people out there trying to do it on their own because hopefully you being here at Cyber Trade University and listen to all the presenters and listen to us, us professionals 
just remember one thing. We were you. We are human. And the reason why we love to teach and why we're here and talking to you is because we know how important education is because we didn't invent education. We just learned that we need it. And hopefully you're learning a lot from it. And hopefully we'll continue with some of us to, to further your education because you know what? Having a coach is not a bad thing. So. Let me change the slides here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on and let's start getting right into it. Uh, first of all, just a quick little disclosure. Visit our website at Cybertrain University. Um, just be aware that there is a very, very high risk of trading and just being here, just we don't want no one here to hold it against us and not any of our speakers on your trading practices. So just be very, very careful of what you're risking uh, before you go out there and do it. Now, quick little intro about Cyber Trading University. Just like I always like to let everybody know who I am, why I'm here, why I'm speaking, and why you need to learn what I'm talking about. Well, first of all, I've been teaching traders since 1995. We started the first school in the industry. Now, how I got into trading was being a failure. That's the honest truth. Um, I, I started off as a broker, hated it, wanted to go out there and said, you know what, I, I, I could do this myself. I don't need to, I want to be the other guy on the phone. I don't, and I thought I knew what it was doing. And what I found out is that I didn't know anything about the market at all because it didn't matter what Fausto Puglisi thought. It didn't matter what John from Tokyo or Mike from Wisconsin think. What matters is where the money is. And the way I've learned is living here in New York, being surrounded by some of the best traders in the world, what they showed me on the first day after I, I almost blew up about three accounts, and believe me, I'm not embarrassed to say it, and I know some of you here probably done the same. But what I've learned on the first day in the job, I should have never, ever made my first trade. And the reason for it, is I didn't know that you could see the high frequency trades. I didn't know you could follow Goldman Sachs and Merrill Lynch. I didn't know that I was reading charts backwards, which by the way, 80% of you are reading charts backwards, and I'll prove it to you today. Um, and that's why, I, and one thing I did learn and know is that I need to do this job because it is one of the best jobs in the world. You are your own boss, you can come and go whenever you please. You could do this just like you saw Tom Busby, you know, sitting and enjoying himself down and playing some golf and now he's going to fly back to Mobile. You could do this anywhere, but you need someone to teach you how to play the game. And uh, what ended up happening, for, for some of you who don't know this, um, I'm also 12-time champion. I beat every single school that I competed against in the Traders Challenge at the World Money Show. Traders Expo. And one thing I, the reason for that is I felt that if I was going to win your trust and prove that I could teach you, I need to prove to be a champion. So, um, you know, once again, I, I would probably have been more of a champion if I had more, if I had more competitions, but uh, the funny story is that it was kind of really difficult for me to go up with a lot of people, so the most I can get is 12. <laughs> But anyway, uh, but I enjoy teaching. I love it, and I'm going to teach you guys how to do the same. And that's why I'm here today. Thank you very much, Ron. I really appreciate that. So what are we going to learn today? A couple of things. First of all, we're going to learn the difference between online brokers and direct access. I'm going to talk about something called head fakes, time and sales, refreshing. I'm going to tell you the difference between level two and level three total view. We're going to talk about charts. We're going to talk about how to find stocks. You know, I know today's Saturday, and, you know, I don't want to you – know, I'm going to try to show you some stocks that, that were hot yesterday. And I'm also going to tell all of you, if you want to join us and watch us trade live in the market during the daytimes, um, how you can go about doing it. Um, there's so many ways that you can learn how to trade by true professionals um, but it does require a commitment from you. Obviously, being here today is one of them. 
but hopefully we'll, we'll win your trust and believe in what we talk about and you will continue with Cyber Trading University. So let's talk about online brokers. Now, does anyone here have an online broker? Just uh, and out of curiosity, just tell me like who you have an account with. So kind of give me an idea if you have the right one or the wrong one. Okay, Trade Monitor, TD, FXCM, great. Options Express, FXCM Fidelity, Interactive Brokers, okay. Trade Monster, good. All right, so let me tell you some of the differences between an online broker and direct access. Now, understand something. I am not in the brokerage business. I'm in the education business. I could tell you this. 50% of the people fail by having the wrong brokerage account. And let me tell you why. First of all, let me just get my pointers out here. There we go. When you deal with an online broker, online brokers are in the business to make money. And I'm not talking about a ticket charge. I'm talking about trading against you. They're working orders. And what happens is online brokers, what they do is they're a middleman. Basically, you're sending them an email, and what they're going to do it is they're going to work the order. They're going to try to buy it on the bid, maybe run it through one of their algorithms, maybe sell you something they have in inventory. Whatever they do, they're going to do something, payment for order flow, but they are in the business to not make seven, ten dollars $10 a ticket. They're in the business to make hundreds of dollars of, uh, on, your tr on your trades. Now, there's nothing wrong with online brokers. I have an account with them. They're great for your IRA. They're great for long-term investing. But they are not, and I repeat, not worth if you're an active trader. They'll do more harm to yourself than good. Oh, they love you. They love you more than anything because the way they make their money is active trading from people like you. But there's a place and time. And I'll give you an example. You know, you're not going to go out there and make a, an investment. I mean, let, let, let's be honest. What's more expensive, the bicycle or the car? Technically, they're both vehicles. Technically, they both have a reason why you use one versus the other. But one thing that really stands out is cost. You know, I mean, one costs a hell of a lot more money than the other. So the thing you have to understand is when you go out there and you look at the, you know, you look at these vehicles, it's the same thing going into trading. So online brokers, you got to be really, really careful. And if you're using an online broker for active trading, I'm telling you right now, you, it, it's, gonna, it's, it's a very, very big mistake that you're making. You could still keep them, but you have to know how to separate one versus the other. You have a new Canadel versus your own car? We guess that's pretty funny because uh, I have a Canadel myself. Great bicycle. <laughs> Tell us the difference. Well, the difference is between direct access and online is online brokers are working your order. They're a middleman. You're sending them an email, and what they're doing is they're going to buy it. Once they buy it, they email you back. Um, on a profit, and their goal is to buy it on the bid and sell to you on the offer or whatever limit order you put it in. That's, I mean, it's more, it's it, obviously it's a, it's a lot more electronic than that, but I'm just keeping things simple. That's how they do it. Now, with direct access, there is no middleman, okay? Direct access is like driving your own car. Very simple way of explaining it. Online brokers are like dealing with public transportation. Direct access is like driving your own car. Now, we do a lot of education for a lot of brokerage firms. I would say over 50. Now, I know a lot of you are sitting there and telling me right now, well, Fausto, who's the best? Or who, who do you recommend? You know what? I can't answer that. Um, if you send me an email, I'll let you know. Every one of you are a case-by-case -case basis, okay? You know, that's like saying, oh, you, you know, uh, Unless we sit there, we're like doctors, all right? You know, when you, when, you, when you are sick, you don't call an 800 number and go through an automated phone system. Well, maybe now in today's times. But, but um, 
But you, you go see the doctor. He has to diagnose you to, to kind of tell you what's, what do you need to make you better. So please don't ask me, Fausto, what do you think of this combo? Why do you think of that one? Who, why do you think this one's better? You're all a case-by-case -case basis. But if you send me an email or set up an appointment um, with us at CyberTrain University, we'll be love to consult, uh, have a consultation with you, including myself. Uh, my email address, hold on, let me put it right here for you. If you need to get a hold of me, my email address is faustop at ctucorp.com. And by the way, I answer all my emails. I probably won't get to them all this weekend, but I will get to you within <laughs> before Monday or Tuesday. All right. Now, by the way, everyone, um, also, Gus, uh, for everyone here, please do not put any emails or addresses or web addresses because, uh, once again, then we will have to turn off the chat, okay? So please, everyone here, don't be uh, sharing any phone numbers or emails. I appreciate it. My email address is F-A-U-S-T-O-P at C-T-U Corp dot com. There you go. All right, now let's talk about the other 50% of the failure rate. The other 50% of the failure rate is people go out there and they don't have the right system. You see, the thing is there are a lot of brokerage firms out there, and, you know, and they offer these, and I know all of you like these new programs and, you know, all these great windows and features, and I mean, it's amazing, but the ones that you need, you don't even have. So let me tell you five that you need. Number one, level two. Second, you need time in sales. Third, you need an ECN book, total view. Number four, you need real-time charts. And number five, you need a top 20 list. Now, just out of curiosity, if everyone could tell me, out of those five, how many do you personally have? One out of the five, five out of the five, ten out of the five, can everybody just give me a chat and let me know? Just out of curiosity. Zero? Bill, you got zero, four, three, five. Wow, not too many fives. None of them, Caesar. Okay. Brad, you got two. What's an ECN? Belinda, well, you're in good news. That's what we're going to talk about. That's where all the high frequency trading is. Now, what is everyone missing? Which the one that's most popular most of you are missing? Marie missing an ECN, okay, which means electronic communication network. Wow, look at all, you're all saying the same thing, ECNs, okay. Well, let me tell you this. 80% of my decisions, trades, are, 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 are um, dictated by the ECN book which is total view. So just imagine, I'm a professional trader, I'm 12-time champion of beating every single school, okay? I'm one of the original day traders slash Sows Bandits, if you ever read the old books, and 80% of my trades, decisions are done by the ECN book. So now you can see why a lot of people fail. Well, you're in good hands, because I'm gonna show you exactly one of the main things that most of you are missing. I don't want to waste your time and talk about things that most of you have. Let's talk about the things you don't have. Well, let's see what the difference between level two and total view. When you look at level two, these are the buyers, these are the sellers. You have three rows. The first row gives you the four-letter abbreviation of the brokerage firm. The second one gives you the price that the brokerage firm is looking to buy this for. And the third column is telling you how many shares. Now, everything there is multiplied by 100. Same thing here. These are brokerage firms want to sell it, the price they want to sell it for, and the amount of shares they want to sell. Now, that's level two, okay? Level three, which is total view, which is here, is giving you 20 times more data than level two. See, the thing is a lot of people get very discouraged. A lot of brokerage firms offer level two, but 
a lot of people says, well, you really can't believe the level two. You don't know what these guys are doing. And, you know, a lot of big scrutiny when it comes to level two. And I agree. There's a lot of funny business going on level two. People are not really advertising, which is the word that you're supposed to use, or saying what they really want to buy or sell. But look how many of you here don't have total view. Total view is going to show you where all the high frequency trades are. Any of you, any of you here heard of Instanet? Any, any of you would know where the institutions trade? Is total view equals ECN? Yes, Leon. You heard of it, Ron? But you never seen it. It's like a unicorn, right? I heard there's, I heard there's a unicorn, but I never really saw one. <laughs> Well, that's right. That's, that's where the dark pools are. Okay. So now let me explain to you how to use it. Once again, this is not the Fausto Puglisi, Cyber Trading University, Special Black Box. This is the exchanges. Okay. This is what you're about to see. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important question to ask you, and I would like you all to answer this question. And I think every one of you could answer this question. How do stocks go up and down in the stock market? Or in any market? Okay. You see what everyone's chatting in? Thank you very much. Supply and demand, right? All of you all agree. So, so we're not agreeing it's not Mr. Bollinger. We're not agreeing it's Mr. Obama. We're not agreeing it's, it's, it's North Korea. We're, we're agreeing it's supply and demand. Okay? Very good. That's, that's, that's basically what makes things move. You go on eBay. Why do things sell more than others? Well, supply and demand. Beanie babies, supply and demand. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, everything is dictated by supply and demand, not just the market, but everything. So now let's apply what we've learned in our everyday lives and apply it to the market. When you trade a stock, ladies and gentlemen, now think carefully. Listen carefully to me. When you trade a stock, do you see the supply and demand, yes or no? And be honest. Okay, kind of, Greg. Kind is really not a word. To me, that's like saying I'm a little pregnant. <laughs> it's like it's a yes or no answer. So if you think so, I'll take that as a no, all right? Now, think about this for a second. And this is what my mentors taught me, okay? They said, they said, wait a minute, Fausto, let me get something straight. You're telling me that you blew up three accounts, which is fine. That's normal. You're not no different than 80% of the failure rate. And, and now you just answered your own question. You're going out there and trading stocks, and you don't even know where the supply and demand is? He says, what kind of trader do you think you are? That's, that's a trader? I mean, how do you, as much as you love a company, if Goldman Sachs is sitting there dumping millions of shares on the offer, and just because you like the company, you think your 100 shares is going to make the stock go up, just because you like Facebook and, you ha and, and you're a diehard 12 hours a day Facebook fan, that you want to buy, that you feel like, oh, but it's a great company, you know, and you go out there and buy it in the IPO, how's that working out for you? Okay? So the thing is, you have to be able to, and it might be, and I'm not saying it's a bad company, you have to be able to follow the money. Now, let's look at some examples here. I assume a lot of you here know how to read charts. Am I right? Everybody here know how to kind of read a chart? It's funny because I, I always find that that's like the first people thing that you're supposed to learn. My mentors, you know what they told me since they said, Fausto, that's the last thing you want to learn because the chart doesn't dictate where it's going. That's just telling you where the history was. History doesn't always repeat the future. So, and that's right, William, because they're lagging. But let's look at a chart, okay? Let's look at the buys and sells, all right? What do we call that, ladies and gentlemen? What's that called? Uh, 
a high, a swing, a bear. How about just call just plain old resistance, right? It's resistance. And if you look over here, what do we call all this? What's that called? What do we call that? Okay. Now, what makes support and resistance levels, everyone? An indecision, Caesar. Got to get, got to get back to the basics. Think of basics: supply and demand. Very good. Buying and selling, right? Well, if I clear this out. If you look over here on total view, you'll see right around the 280, 228, there's a 10,000 share buyer. And right here at 236, there's a 6,000 share seller. So that probably explains why that is a resistance and this is a support. Okay. Once again, you just all answered your own question. How do stocks go up and go down? by buying and selling. So now you get to see the buyers and sellers. That, ladies and gentlemen, is called the high frequency trades. Okay? Here's another clear example. Support, support, resistance, resistance. Why is $8 a support level, everyone? Anthony's got a good question. Um, I never knew that those bids and offers are real in place to hold a level. Well, Anthony, listen, how do stocks go up and go down? Buying and selling. Once again, and you have to ask yourself a question because that's a great point. You have to remember this. Who really taught you how to trade? Do you guys remember where you learned math? Did you ever, anyone here go to college? Did you, do you remember your favorite teacher? Okay. Do you remember something that they taught you that helped you get to where you are today? Or how about your parents? Didn't they, uh, didn't they ever teach you little things that help you succeed in life over the course of the day? Well, who here really taught you how to trade? How successful you think you're going to, how successful you think a mutual fund is going to be self-taught? Would you trust that guy? We're no different. You know? I look at you guys as my children. Think about this. Would you trust your teenage kid to go drive a car if he never took a road test? You never give him the keys. And driving a car is pretty simple. You know, one of you just said, well, it took me years to be self-taught. Yeah, eventually you'll figure it out. But wouldn't it be just cheaper just to be here and just say, oh, now it makes sense. Now I know why I have buyers out there. Because at $8, when you look over here, would it look like a 200-share buyer would officially make a, a, a demand at $8.11? Not really. 400 Not really. 600 at $8.06? Once you start getting around this $8 price range, you have a 2,000 chair buyer, a 1,600 chair buyer, a 29. I mean, you're 10,000. No wonder why every time it hit $8, it went up. That is where the big supplies are. That's where the volume is. Um, but by the way, I know some of you have been here for a while. Yes, this has been recorded, so you will, uh, we will email it to you, whatever you missed. The same thing for the resistance level there. Not a whole lot of sellers, but there's definitely something right here that might explain why that's a resistance. Now, understand something. This is just basic one-on-one -on -one trading, okay? Forget about the strategy and finding them. The one thing that we've always, that I was always taught that I teach my students, and hopefully one day you will be one of my students also, um, and I could help you know, show you how to do it the right way, but you have to look at this. The basic one-on-one of trading is following supply and demand, following the money. That's all it is. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, no, absolutely no. This is a real, real screenshot. 
of an execution. And by the way, Cheryl, um, if you, at the end of this presentation, um, we have a live demonstration that I do live in the market. I mean, today is Saturday, but you're more than happy to come up and watch us trade live. We do webinars all day long where we watch and follow the money. And you know what? And, and, and I like that. And I like that approach because you know what? We're not PowerPoint um, pushers. We're traders. So the thing is that because it is Saturday, we just take very good screenshots and show you what's going on. That's right, Mike. You know, join our cyber group chat room. And by the way, I'll tell you a little bit more about the end of the presentation if you guys want to, you know, want to join a professional trading room. Here's another example. We could see clear as day major resistance levels right here, right? Now, you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to look at a chart, any indicator, any Bolger band, maybe Mr. Fibonacci, 200 moving average, clear as day would have told you 3150 is resistance levels. Well, what makes the resistance levels? Well, once you, if you look over here and see the high frequency trades, You'll see that there's a 12,000 share seller, a 21,000 share seller, and a 10,000 share seller right there. There's a very, very big supply. 500 shares does not change my mind. Yeah, by the way, I mean, I know some of you here have watched John Nigerian on CNBC. You watch Kramer. You, you, you ever watch when they, when they show the floor of the exchange? Do you ever watch when they, when, when, when the, when the, when the when the traders are on the floor, do you ever look behind them? Do you ever look at the screens that they're looking at? Do you know what they look at, by the way? What are they looking at? You always listen to what they're saying, but do you ever look what they're looking at, those tablets they walk around? That's right, Greg. They're looking at orders. They're looking at numbers. Do you see any charts? That, do you ever see any charts? Or do you see numbers? What does everybody see? What do you think you see? Just orders, right? Numbers. Ron says, I had no idea. Well, Ron, listen, that's why you're here. And listen, I live here in New York. I was trained by the best traders. I've been down there. You know, I was a market maker. And I'm telling you, everything that you thought you, you, thought you knew is the total opposite. Trust me, market makers do not want you to know about this technology. They do not want, mutual funds do not want you to see their orders. And you hear so many, like, negativity about, like, high frequency. Oh, you got to be careful. The program trading, the algorithms, the, the black boxes, the high frequency trades, the dark pools. Yeah, yeah. That data is available to you. The thing is, who really taught you and showed you it exists? And that's why you're here. Greg, you know what? That's We didn't get to that yet. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm sparking your interest. Now, here's the next thing people ask. Stocks break supports and resistance levels all the time, right? Don't they? Don't they break supports and resistance levels? And how do you know that? How many times have you went out there and you followed that indicator like, oh, there's the resistance level. It's, gonna go. it's definitely going to back off now. This thing is definitely going down. You know, and then all of a sudden, or it's going to go, you know, I got to get out. And all of a sudden, it breaks it, you know, and it goes higher. Well, let's see. What is that called right there, ladies and gentlemen? What do you call that? What's that called? Double top. I knew somebody was going to say that. It's resistance, right? Can everybody chat that in there? That's resistance. Okay. What is this called? What's that called? It's called support. Now, in theory, when a stock's at support, what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to go up. Right? And when a stock's at a resistance, it's supposed to go down. Now, when you look over here at 1620, 
there's a 10,300 share seller out there, so it explains every time it went up, it came down. When it went up, it came down. Now, right now, we're trading right down here at 610. Do you guys see a 10,000 share buyer out there? But you said it was supposed to go up. It's support levels. The indicator said it was going up. The chart says it was going up. He's invisible, Anthony? No, he's not invisible. He's just not there. Okay? Once again, what do you, you know, there's nothing invisible with, if you don't have the right tools. Okay? You can't be a very successful chef without knives. You can't be a very good plumber or a, a good contractor, a good builder without your hammer and nails. This ain't going to happen. You're not going to be a very good painter without a good brush. You're not going to be a good trader without level three and seeing the high-frequency trades. Now, moving forward, that what you're seeing is you're seeing orders, you know? And the thing is that when you go out there and trade, you got to be able to see those big orders out there. A uh, couple of questions here. Bruce has a lot of very good questions, and I, I want to address it. He says you don't see the dark pools either, Bruce. Bruce, I, who taught you how to trade? Are you a professional trader? Are you a market maker? Where did you really learn how to trade? So exactly. And if you if you what you what I recommend you to do is if you're going to listen to somebody teach how to trade, you should listen to a professional trader. When you see well, try to do come to New York, try to get a try to get an appointment to go down to the New York Stock Exchange, try to watch what they're doing, try, maybe take uh, you know, you could take our courses, we'll show you how to do it. But the thing is, you need someone to show you how to do it right. Now, that is just basic one-on-one -on -one trading. And when I was when I was trained by my mentors, that was the, that obviously that was the first thing that explained to me why I lost money. I mean, how to not know where everybody else is doing is obviously a big mistake. So, now let's talk about the other failure rates. Now we just covered one topic of not be able to monitor and manage and watch the big trades. Now let's talk about timing. Timing, trading is not a full-time job. If anyone here has not figured that out, the reason why I teach is because I, believe it or not, was semi-retired. I started when I was 20 years old. 20 years old I started uh, learning how to trade. And by the age of 24, I was only trading an hour a day. And the way I got into education, a lot of people saw me trade and knew I was very successful, plus they want to know why I was always on vacation all the time, is because trading is, is a, there's only a small window of opportunity when to trade. And that's only in early mornings. Now, if you're a Forex trader, I know Boris was talking about it earlier. For some of you that miss him, it was recorded. But, like, when it comes to Forex or you had Tom Busby come on talking about futures, you know, there are certain times where the markets are more volatile than others. Now, the one thing that I was trained, and hopefully I'll get the opportunity to train all of you also, is I was trained to monitor pre-market. I was, I was trained to monitor what happens in pre-market because there are a lot of people who go out there and put orders in the pre-market not knowing what's really going on, which is what you see with the high-frequency trades. That gives you a sense of direction to make those big runs. Now, look at this example right here. Here's line 30. If you bought a 1,000 shares of a $20 stock, how much money is that, everyone? The twenty thousand dollar investment, right? Now, right here, if the stock goes up to twenty one twenty one dollars, you make a thousand dollars, thousand dollar profit. Do that over the course of the year, 
you're talking over a quarter of a million dollars. Not bad for a day's pay. You know what? If you got only 20% of that move, maybe just a little bit, you could have made yourself, if you could do that consistently, you could make 50000 a year. See, traders don't make big money as much as you think. We make a very good living. And it took me, uh, it took me time to learn that. Daniel says $1,000 minus fees. Daniel, do you own a car? Daniel? Okay. When, well, well, you know, the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is a lot of people always tell me, oh, but what if, you know, plus fees and everything else. Fees are part of doing business. If you can't afford the fees, then you can't afford the trade. You know, it's like the guy goes to the Mercedes dealer. What, what's the gas mileage? And he'd be like, son, if you're worrying about the gas, you can't afford the car. Okay? Trading's the same thing. If you can't afford the ticket charges, you can't afford the trade. It's part of doing business. That's right. It's like taxes. You know, people always ask me. They says, oh, you know, then you got to pay taxes on that. You know what? If you're paying taxes, that's a good thing. That means you're making money. When my account always told me, if you don't pay taxes, that means you're not making money. Then you got problems. <laughs> that's right, uh, Brenda. It's part of doing business. But doing business doesn't require you to do a lot of trades. It requires you to be at the certain times during the day. So this is why I only trade certain times. Like I know futures. I know Tom Busby starts around only 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. Central. That's a very busy time. Um, I know some of you here trade in the Forex market. But when the London market opens up, that's a very good time to trade. I mean, everything is relative. That's why a lot of us people that, that are speaking here, we have a lot of time on our hands. And, you know, we're no different than your Harvard graduate um, professor, you know. We own some of the biggest practices in the world, but we enjoy teaching, and that's why we're here. By the way, if anyone here is interested, I actually came out with a clock, a mouse pad. Um, I call it my little discipline clock. We have a wall clock and a mouse pad. If anyone here is interested um, learning more about the mouse pad, you could visit our website um, and get it. I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, it saves you, this mouse pad will save you <laughs> thousands. Um, but anyway, if anyone's interested in the uh, mouse pad, I'll just put the link in for you and we'll get it shipped out to you if, if you're anyone's interested in purchasing it. Great little novelty to have. Gives you a little more details on when the best times and the worst times to trade. Now, does anyone here know how to read charts? Okay, what, what chart is easier to read? Chart number one or chart number two? Door number one or door number two? Door number two. How the hell do people actually read this stuff? I mean, what do we got there? A Bolger band, a volume, a stochastic, uh, a pivot point, MACD, moving average. I mean, I think I think we could really figure it out that support levels is right here, don't you think? I mean, what do you got going on over here? And there are people actually could read that stuff, maybe some of you. But one thing I was trained by my, my mentors is called the KISS method, and don't all of you ever forget it. Keep it super simple. That's what it stands for. So the thing is that everybody here is looking for that crystal ball. It doesn't work that way, okay? There's this thing called hard work. You know, people say, oh, you're lucky. Well, you know what? You make your own luck. You know how you make your own luck? is by being there and being at the right place at the right time, all right? But just being there consistently. Don't – the problem with indicators – is they're lagging. Now, they do work for investing, long-term trading. I don't care what anyone tells you. They do not work for day trading, period, period, end the conversation. So don't use it. If you're planning on trying to day trade, you have to understand something. By the time the indicator moves, it's too late. Trading, specifically in day trading, you, most of the money's made within the first 10, 15 minutes of the open. 
Sometimes these indicators don't kick in for about 30, 40 minutes later, depending on which one you have. So, and not only that, just to let everybody know, you have to learn the basics first to trading before you could start getting into all this advanced stuff, okay, of understanding what does one, one versus the other. What does KISS method mean? Keep it super simple. KISS method. Engineers like to call it keep it simple stupid. I don't like to use the stupid one in the end. Um, I don't like to call anybody stupid, but I like to call it simple. Well, you know what happens, William, when you don't learn how to crawl. You start running. Anyone here have a little, any little babies out there? I got three wonderful little boys. You know, Jesus, it's like, you know, I, think, I, I think that's where I got most of my gray hairs. Um, now, how 50% of the people also fail? Finding trading stocks. You know, the wrong ones. I don't care what I trade. I mean, let's think about it. Does anybody here care what you trade or you want to make money? I mean, I mean why are you all here? When you trade, when you go into a position, I mean, you're, you're here just to make, exactly. You just want to make money. And most traders trade stocks of stocks that I wouldn't even trade. Anyone hear about this stock, ACUR, yesterday? No one heard about this? Nobody heard about this stock? Are you kidding me? This stock right at the open at 930 ran from $2.40 to, at 1030, forget about 1030, at almost 945, in 15 minutes, the thing ran to 340. What is 240 minus 340, everyone? On 1,000 shares, that's a 1,000 special, Michael, that's right. It's $1,000. Times that by 52 weeks, it is 20 trading days in a year. How much money is that? How did you find it? It was the biggest percentage gainer right here. $1,000 a day, it's almost over a quarter of a million dollars over the year. And how much you have to risk? 2400 Forget it. If you only caught a little bit of it, 20% of that, you would have made some good money. Well, they're there every day. I mean, here's one stock. I mean, there's another one that was on this list. You can see the percentage gainer right here on the right. Let's go to the next one. CSIQ. Anyone see that one? It was the, it was the sixth biggest percentage gainer of the day. Anyone hear of this one? Of 15%? Stock went from 460 to 540. Not as pretty on a swing trade. In the month of April, it ran from three to five. Now, I personally like to trade less expensive stocks, just to let you know. For, and I'll tell you, this is what my mentors taught me. It makes perfect sense. Less risk, more reward. You deal with more expensive stocks, you deal with better traders on Wall Street. It's not worth it. What's the minimum you need to trade? I don't know. If you bought 1,000 shares, what's $4? It's $4,000. You don't need a lot of money. That's another big misconception people make. You think you need a lot of money to trade, and it's not true. Here's another one, WBSN. This stock was number four on the list right here. Stock went from $16 to 1780 You could see right here on the long-term chart. You could even do a nice little swing trade. You know, look at all these greens, which means it's probably going higher. Isn't this list after the fact? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The, well, depends on your execution system, Tom. If you have an execution system that's showing you after the fact. But we trade stocks like this all day long. You know, this stock right here, for example, at 12 o'clock, the stock was already up pretty big in the morning. You know, go into the afternoon, you still could have made money. I mean, the thing moved all day. And you know what? Look at this right here. You could have traded this stock in, what, two hours right here? See that? You could have made 20 cents long, 20 cents short. 20 cents long, 20 cents short. 20 cents long. You could have traded this stock all day. 
Do you see these setups in pre-market? Absolutely. All the time, Maria. Um, how do you know if you aren't buying the percentage gainers on the top? John, once again, supply and demand. Total view. Listen, if people still want to buy it, doesn't want to keep going up? Here's another one, WBSN. Oh, I told you about this one. Sorry about that. Here's another one, SOHO. This actually moved um, in the earlier months. This stock ran from $48 to 40 came out with news. I mean, they're out there, SOHO. Anybody hear this, SOHO.com? Like Mike's saying, join our chat room. I mean, these are we, we trade stocks like this all day long. Look at this one. At, at 3.30, right before the market closed, anybody hear about this stock right here? S-Y-O-U? Chang Yu, I don't even know what the hell this company does. But it definitely did a really nice move in 30 minutes. It ran from $28 to $32. You think I care what the company does? This thing, this had buyers all over. They kept bidding on it and bidding on it and bidding on it. They ran this thing all the way up. But, you know, the point that I'm trying to get to for all of you is that these stocks are there every day. Every day there are these stocks to trade. And what happens, a lot of you keep thinking, well, you know, um, how about Apple? First of all, who can afford to trade a $400 stock? And how's that working out for you at 700 You know? And please don't tell me what Mike just said. Oh, he beat me to it. Oh, but I could trade the option. You know, yeah, okay. That's that. See, that attitude is the wrong reason why you trade Apple, okay? The reason why you trade options is for leverage. You don't trade options because you can't afford the stock, you, you know, and that's, that's where people get themselves in trouble. As much as you think you, you say, well, I like Apple, I want to trade, it's got good options, good, great. But you know what? You trade it because, you know what? You could have traded this stock, S-Y-O-U, and could have made a hell of a lot more money in the option on this one, on this day, than trading Apple. You know, there's, you understand, and, and not only that, you have to learn how to trade the stock first before you can trade the option. For some of you who don't know that. MTG, another big winner. Look at this thing. I mean, they're there every day. So my point that I'm getting to is let, let, let's try to do a recap what we learned so far. We've learned that, number one, you need the right execution system. Number two, you need, we learned that you got to have the right brokerage account. Number three, we've learned about high-frequency trades, total view. We've learned about timing during the day, how critical that is. Number four, we've learned how to keep charts simple. Number five, we've learned that we, we, there, there's another world out there that trades stocks to make a day's pay. So there are a lot of things that you have to look at. And trust me, this is what everything that I'm telling you is what my mentors taught me. So know what your profit goals are, daily, monthly, be realistic. You know, you don't need a lot of money to make a day's pay. You know that? It doesn't really require you to go out there and make a lot of money doing it. Some of you are semi-retired. Maybe some of you are living in Social Security. doesn't cut enough. You know, forget about the person that's showing you how to make 10000 a day, 2000 a day. You've got to learn how to keep it simple. It, 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 trading doesn't really require you to make too much. Now, a couple of things just to let you guys know, because I'm running out of time here, and I know we're going to have our featured guest coming up. Uh, Peter's coming and join us in about 10 minutes. Um, just want to tell you guys some, a couple of things really quick. We were ranked number one school by Equities, Equities Magazine six years in a row. Um, Active Trader Magazine wrote a front page article on market maker traps. Now, if anyone wants to read this article, um, it's nine pages. It was featured right on the home page. Send me an email, and um, I show you how market makers do reverse psychology. I think it's a great article. I think everyone will be be a little um, depressed on what you're about to see and I think it's illegal but it's perfectly legal and once again it was written up in there and I think you guys want to read it. 
Now, here's my personal email address. If you want a copy of today's slides, if you have any questions, please email me. I answer all my questions. You know, um, the, the worst thing that could happen is that you took the time to do it, but I could probably save you thousands by just telling you about one or two things, questions that you didn't know that I could answer for you. Now, Cybertree University teaches for some of the biggest brokerage firms in the world. Uh, by the way, if you click on my, um, you see my name up on top. If you click on that little, uh, looks like a wait or something like that, that actually will bring you to today's promo that we're going to give all of you. But we do education with some of the biggest brokerage firms in the industry. Uh, once again, I have to thank our, our sponsors too, like Trade Monster being here and FXCM and all them. We do education for every one of these brokerage firms. We also have really good trading layouts if anyone's interested. So if anyone's looking, if anyone has any of these platforms, feel free to contact us and we'll be happy to get, a, um, get you a, a screen layout. Now, two packages, if anybody wants to learn on a home study course, our DVD set, um, I could teach you all these things over 10 hours to $3.99. Just visit our homepage or our site. Um, like I said, you can click right next to my name up on the panelists. This is a personal URL. Just click on that, and it will send you to that link. At the minimum, running one really nice promo right now. Uh, for $10, we're running a professional trading room. It runs all day. One of you guys were just asking me, how did you find this and, you know, the total view. And we, we show you all that. We have a live professional trading room that runs all day. We talk about futures, Forex, options. Um, I'm in there. We get Stephanie specials, Fausto specials, Jared's best, all from Forex to options to stocks. For $10, a promo that we're running, if you want to learn more and become a member, once again, um, Join us. You can cancel at any time you want. And uh, here's the link. It's, oh, that's the mouse pad. I'm sorry. Just click on this link, and you'll be able to register for it. Uh, we also teach uh, uh, on-site online courses. Call Education Advisor, and they'll be happy to tell you more about it. Uh, stocks, options, futures, and Forex. And one thing we will do for all of you, if anyone is here interested of having a, an appointment, talk to an instructor, including myself, um, send me a personal email or give us a call now, and you'll set up an appointment, and we'll be happy to give you our time and try to educate you more about what would be best for you. I know a lot of you guys are asking me, who's a good broker? What do we use? How do we? Listen, you're all a case-by-case -case basis. We're a doctor. You're interviewing us. Let us tell you what's best for you. So definitely take the time to give us a call and learn more about it. All right, so with that said, any last-minute questions uh, before we uh, – are you on YouTube? Yes, we are, Mike. Absolutely. And all these events will be recorded on and be on YouTube by, uh, by Monday. The link to the promo, yes. If you click next to my name, If you click next to my name, um, there's a little, like a pin. Just click on that, that personal URL, and that will bring you to the link. Oh, there it is. That's the right one. One was to the mouse pad. That's this one. Or you can click that and uh, the link I just put in there to get registered. Uh, level 3 is on NASDAQ. Yes, Tony. Once again, it's not anyone special. That, that is NASDAQ software. Uh, email on the screen, sure. You could, um, by the way, if you go to our homepage or our website at Cybertrain University, where you see the main screen, um, where you get to register, you'll see it up there also. Do you trade the DAX? No, I only trade specifically stocks. Access to your room comes with the membership? Yes, it does, Anthony. Absolutely. For, for one whole month, I'm telling you, it's the best investment that you'll make. 
Uh, just try it out. If you don't like it, listen, we took your lunch money. <laughs> That's the worst thing. But what we did is we kind of designed more of a, of a professional trading room. Uh, we're all professional traders, including our instructors. We do presentations all day long. Uh, but we're trading with you. One of the only schools that probably do that. That's right. It's less than a commission to try it out. Um, how big are our rooms? It depends. You know, we have breakout rooms. Uh, we, we're launching green rooms, so you know, it ranges between 100 and 200 people for the small ones that want to make an investment in themselves. No offense to all of us, but if you really, you, you can listen. If you try it once, if you use it once a month, it's more than enough. Kevin, you're in there. It rocks. Well, thank you very much sharing that. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to take a break right now. I'm going to give you about five minutes, and then we're going to bring our featured guest uh, from Option Monster. Peter uh, Nigerian is going to be joining us, and then uh, we're going to make the announcement for the raffle winner. And uh, we're going to – who won the computer setup from Easy Trading Computers. In the meantime, everyone, uh, stand by. The lines are open if anyone wants to call in or register. But in the meantime, we're going to get uh, – Peter is going to be joining us in another few minutes. Thanks, everyone. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is Fausto from CyberTrading University. Register today at www.cybertradinguniversity.com or call 877-70-CYBER 